In this video, we shall explain how to solve problems on static and kinetic frictions efficiently. We shall explain how to set up free body diagrams, identify the variable or variables to solve, identify what are the things that are given in a particular problem, the information, and then finally apply Newton's second law to the problem and solve whatever that needs to be solved. Problem 1. A worker pushes a small crate with mass 8.5 kilograms and a horizontal surface with constant speed of 5 meter per second. So that means the acceleration is 0. The coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.2. So these are all information that's given. So you want to determine the force F that the worker must exert on the crate to maintain the constant speed motion. So what is this number in order for the acceleration to be 0? So let's label the forces. So one of the forces have been labeled for you, that is F. Now, the usual one is the weight. So weight is 8.5 times gravity. And then you have this normal force that plays an important role in the calculation of friction. So normal force. And normal force is the same as W. Then, of course, you have this kinetic friction between the surfaces of the box and the floor. Let's label it F sub K. And that's it. So the acceleration is zero. And we shall start with identifying what need to be solved. So what need to be solved is this. Since the acceleration is zero, the net force, according to Newton's second law, must be zero. So that means the rightward force must be balanced by the leftward force. There are only one rightward force and one leftward force. So by equating the capital F, the, uh, the force that the worker pushes, with which the worker pushes that box, by equating that to the kinetic friction, and kinetic friction is mu sub k times the normal. Mu sub k is known, it's 0 0.2, that's given right here. And the normal force is the same as the weight, which is 8.5 times gravity. You end up concluding that the minimum force required to maintain the constant speed, or zero acceleration, is 16.7 newtons, because g is 9.81. So that is part A. Now let's look at part B. Now we know this force here is 16.7, that means the friction is also, the kinetic friction is also 16.7, as we have reasoned out in part A. So for part B, if that force is suddenly removed, obviously then this object will slow down under the influence of kinetic friction. And if so, how long does it take for the crate to come to a complete stop? Now remember that this is a kinematics problem. How do we know it's a kinematics problem? Because the only force that's acting that is slowing down this crate as it moves from initial point to the final point is friction. So if friction is constant, that means the acceleration is constant or the deceleration is constant. And since the deceleration is constant, this is essentially a kinematics problem. So let's say the force is removed at the initial point while this box is moving with the speed of 5 meter per second. That was that. And then here, the, initial, the final speed is zero because it comes to a complete stop. Now you need to figure out how long it takes. So before you do that, you need to know what acceleration is. Now we know in this case, net force is just the kinetic friction. And the kinetic friction is defined as mu k times normal. And by F equals to MA, this is just M times A. So by using this equation, mu K is 0 0.2. Normal force is just the weight right here. So weight is 8.5 times gravity equals this part here now. Mass is 8.5 again times acceleration. So you see the mass will just get cancelled. And the acceleration is... 0 0.2 times gravity. So that is the acceleration that we need to use. And what is the value of the acceleration? 
the acceleration or the deceleration is 1.96 meter per second squared. Next, we need to know which kinematic equation to use. Now, we know acceleration, we know the final speed, initial speed, and we need to know the time. So the only candidate is the first equation of kinematics, which is the final speed equals initial speed plus acceleration times time. So the final speed is zero, the initial speed is five. Now this is a deceleration because the object is moving this way, but the acceleration is acting in an opposite direction, so it's negative. So minus 1.96 times time, and you can solve for the time as five over 1.96 seconds. And that's gonna be 2.55 seconds for part B. Problem two, two boxes are connected by a rope on a horizontal surface. So this is the rope right there. A box A has mass three kilograms. So that is uh, three kilograms for the red box. B has the mass of five kilograms. Now the coefficient of kinetic friction between the boxes and the surfaces, between two boxes and the surfaces here and here is 0 0.25. The boxes are pulled to the right at constant velocity by force F. Calculate F and the tension in that connecting rope. So first is the free body diagram. We need two free body diagrams because there are two masses. So let's do the free body diagram for object a. So what are the forces here? So for body A, you have the weight. So weight is three times gravity. And then you have the normal force. Which is also the same as three G, same as the weight. And then you have the tension pulling the A rightward, T, which is one of those variables that we want to find. And then you have this kinetic friction F sub K. Now the acceleration is zero because the boxes are pulled to the right with constant velocity. So that means since the net force is zero because the acceleration is zero, the forward force tension must be balanced by the kinetic friction. So we can proceed to calculate the tension first. Kinetic friction is given by the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. So the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.25. It's given right there. The normal force is the same as weight, which is 3 times gravity. And when you calculate that, you get 7.36 newtons. So that is the tension. So part A is uh, part B is solved, 7.36 newtons for the tension. Now let's do the free body diagram for object B, which is the 5 kg object. So of course you have the weight. The weight is given by 5 times gravity. And then you have this normal force from the floor, which is the same as the weight in this case, so 5 times gravity. And then you have this force that is being applied by the rope and the tension from the string, which will tend to pull the B leftward. And in addition to that, you also have the kinetic friction that acts opposite to the direction of motion of object B. So what is the net force in this case? So the net force in this case, since the object is still moving to the, uh, well, it's not moving with acceleration, it's moving with constant velocity. That means this force is balanced by the sum of tension and kinetic friction. So the net force has got to be zero. And the reason it's zero because the net force, um, the forward force is balanced by the sum of kinetic friction and tension. Note that this kinetic friction is kinetic friction on object B. So in general, it will be different from the kinetic friction on object A. So let's write over here what F is. F is tension, which we have already found in part A, which is 
36 newtons plus the kinetic friction on object B is coefficient of kinetic friction which we know 0.25 times the normal force on object B which is the 5 times gravity. So it's going to give us 7.36 plus 0 0.25 that's the mu k times the normal force which is 5 times gravity and that is 19.6 newtons so this is the answer for part a which is the force that is being applied so 7.36 the tension here is uh, answer for part b okay and that solves the problem problem three now block a has a mass of four kilograms and block b has a mass of two kilograms the coefficient of kinetic friction between b and the horizontal surface is 0 0.4 so the friction exists only here the inclined plane has no friction calculate the tension in the cord and the magnitude of the acceleration of the blocks so they both have the same acceleration because they are part of the same system and the tension in this part and that part must be the same because they are the same string connected by a massless pulley. So let's do the free body diagram for object B first. So the one that is on the horizontal surface. So the forces are you have the weight, the mass is 2g for this weight. So the weight is 2 times gravity. And then you have the normal force, which is the same as weight in this case, two times gravity. And then there is this tension that is pulling it to the left and kinetic friction opposing the motion, which is mu sub k times the normal force. And the acceleration has got to be to the left. So now if you write down the Newton's second law for this system, this object B, it will be tension minus the kinetic friction because tension is obviously bigger than the kinetic friction because the acceleration is leftward and that will give us t minus mu sub k mu sub k is 0 0.4 this one here times the normal force which is two times gravity and that is the same as m a m is two kilograms and acceleration is a so this is essentially f equals to m a so equation 1 is t minus 0 0.8 g minus uh, equals 2a. So that is equation 1 from the first free body diagram. Now let's do the second free body diagram. So the second free body diagram is for object A. So as always you have this weight 4 times gravity because the mass is 4 kg. And then you have tension that is pulling it up the plane. Now this has no friction, so you don't have to worry about friction, but you have to label the component of weight perpendicular and parallel to the plane. Perpendicular to the plane is 4 g times cosine of the inclination angle, which is 25 degrees. And then the parallel component of weight, which is 4 times g sine 25 degrees. The acceleration is down the plane. So the equation that we would get, the F equals to MA for the second part, for the second mass, is W parallel minus tension is 4A, which will give you the following. And this is the second equation that we need. So you have two unknowns, T and A, T and A, and two equations, you can solve them simultaneously. When you add equations one and two, 4g 25 plus minus 0.8g that's going to be that and minus t plus t that's going to go away and then the right hand side is 6a plus 2a that is 6a and then you can solve the a and that is simply 1.46 meter per second squared now you can substitute this a value in here or there to get the tension so if you use equation 1, then the tension will be given by this equation. And when you compute it, you will get 10.8 newtons. And that solves the problem. Thank you for watching.